New Safari tab bar, tab groups, tabs everywhere, anywhere even. Universal control for iPad and Mac. AirPlay to Mac, AirPlay speaker from Mac, spatial audio with heads track, shortcuts on Mac, new books app, hello screen savers and wallpapers for all, privacy indicators, privacy protections, split view swapping, and a ton, an imperial metric ton of iOS crossover features. Day and frickin' hallelujah date. It's the Mac OS Monterey public beta. It supports the MacBook back to 2016, the MacBook Air and Pro back to 2015, the Mac Mini back to 2014, the iMac back to 2015, the iMac Pro, and the Mac Pro back to the trash can. You can download it now, but just remember, beta really means beta, so don't put it on anything mission critical. Now, let's do this. Sponsored by Brilliant. I'm breaking down all the most important features from all of Apple's public betas and doing a slew of technical deep dives as well. So hit the subscribe button and bell and you won't miss any of them. Time was iPhone would get a bunch of fancy new features each year, every year, but it would take additional years, if not never, for them to come to the Mac. Well, not today, software Satan, not anymore. Thanks to Reorgs, thanks to SwiftUI, thanks to Apple Silicon, thanks to Federighi finally going full on Fahey level Apple Cinematic Universe, from FaceTime to messages, share play to shared with you, live text to translate, the vast majority of all those fancy new iOS features are now coming on time. And at the same time, to Mac OS. I covered all of them in the iOS and iPad OS beta videos, so I won't recapitulate them all here, but there's some interesting Mac specific tech going on as well. Live text, for example, only works on M1 Macs, not Intel, because live text is literally live. Apple's doing it on the fly and in real time. No pre-processing or indexing, no server round tripping. As soon as you encounter an image, any image, new or old, including images on web pages, it gets sent straight to the neural engine and any and all text is made instantly selectable and actionable without impacting the other work the CPU and GPU need to be doing at that time. And on device and continuous dictation powered again by the neural engine on the M1 Max that'll personalize to you over time. Same with portrait mode in FaceTime. Apple's using the neural engine in the M1 chip to do real time monocular depth estimation and segmentation masking like the 2020 iPhone SE. You can toggle that and audio modes in control center. You can also see up to 20 people in the new grid view as well on any Mac. And if you have more than that on your table read, the others will be rostered and rotated in and out as they speak. There's also a new hot mic indicator, software, not hardware like the hot camera indicator, but it'll show up next to the control center on the menu and above the control center interface when you expand it. So you can see exactly when and what is listening to you at any given time. Because the Mac is a full on multi-windowing environment, share play on the Mac can be just way less constrained or just let you get way more distracted than is possible on the iPhone or iPad. Don't tell my family. And the Mac will even let you switch apps in split view now without having to just burn down the whole setup and start over again, which is something I've been complaining about for years and I'm so happy it is finally fixed. 20 years ago, Don Melton, Ken Kashinda, and Richard Williamson kicked off the Alexander project at Apple. They forked KHTML, Conqueror, made WebKit, the rendering engine, and the Safari web browser, Apple's browser. Under the single Kwisatz Haderach of zero regression, it just doesn't slow down, not ever. With macOS Monterey, that obsession continues with the new tab bar, which I've actually been kind of hesitant about. I was very much old navigator yells at clouds when the address bars and search fields were first conflated and seeing Apple further conflate them with tab bars now, I was screaming a little bit in my heart. But it's working and it's significantly reducing the amount of interface Chrome, not Chrome, but yeah, that too, around all of my web content, which can never get enough pixels as far as I'm concerned. So I'll just wait and see how I feel about that come release. What's been much more of an instant win for me though is tab groups. Put all the pages you use together, all your web workflows, and then invoke them, switch between them, add new tabs to them, even share them at any time. And if you have multiple Apple devices, they'll sync between your Mac, iPhone, and iPad. So you can easily, instantly get to any of your tag groups from any of your devices. The new quick note feature, which I covered in the iPad OS video is baked right in as well. So you can jot down some thoughts, highlight some text 
and the quick note will persist so you can revisit or update it anytime you go back to that specific website. Web extensions, which have been a bit of a mixed as in every time they update, they disappear until I jump through inordinate hoops to get them somehow re-enabled. Blessing for me on Big Sur are going cross-platform with the iPad and iPhone now as well, which will just not abide any such shenanigans. So I have all my fingers crossed that those will be fixed and fast as well. And if you subscribe to iCloud Plus, which up until now just meant paying for extra iCloud storage or Apple One, Private Relay will help protect your identity from profilers online. Basically, it hides the address of the website you're going to, even from your ISP, and your IP address from not just the website you're going to, but any data harvesters they're connected to. I have a whole entire deep dive video up on that already, and I'll link to that in the description. Because while it is absolutely not a VPN, the implementation is still really, really cool. And there's a built-in authenticator now for two-factor security tokens, so you don't have to rely on just a password or use the nobody should be using easy to SIM swap SMS system to protect your accounts. There's even an iCloud password app for the web and an Edge extension for Windows users in the Edge store. So Satya Microsoft asks, Tim Apple answers. With universal control, you can use your Mac to control your iPad, two iPads, an iPad and another Mac, you get the idea. It's not a screen takeover like Sidecar or projection like AirPlay. Both of those are still there and you can still use them. This just is not turning your iPads or other Mac into a secondary or tertiary display. The iPads stay iPads. The Mac, extra Mac stays, uh, it's a Mac, an extra Mac. You can just use a single Mac keyboard, mouse or trackpad to control the iPads or that other Mac. And it's instant setup if you just drag your mouse cursor from your main Mac and keep dragging it in the direction of your iPad or other Mac. But you can also configure a static or frequent combo in system preferences for literally zero setup. Then you can just point, click, swipe, type, open, close, drag, drop across both devices, multiple desktops, you can even switch between the different Mac keyboards. It's just the biggest escalation in Apple's continuity system ever. Like we've all just been ecosystemed again, son, daughter, child, whatever. Of course, there's a lot more going on, especially behind the scenes for privacy and security. And I've got, you guessed it, a whole entire video up on that as well. And that link is also in the description. I've been busy. Now, AirPlay for Mac will let you stream video from your iPhone, iPad, or other Mac to any Mac. Just pick the Mac the way you would any AirPlay source and use your Mac like, like it was a television attached to an Apple TV. It's not target display mode, the late still lamented hardline that let you use an iMac as a legit second screen for your Mac. That's been lost to frame stitching for 5K displays for a few years now. This has higher latency to ensure the sync, which you can minimize by doing it over a USB cable if you really want to, but still it's not ideal. But if that's all you want, uh, and for many applications, it'll be all that you really need. You can use it to take over your iMac screen with your MacBook screen to mirror or extend your display or just beam something from your iPhone to your much bigger iMac screen. And if you don't want to or don't have video, you can even target your Mac now as an AirPlay 2 speaker for that audio. I have been literally waiting for this, asking for this for years now. So I am super happy it is finally here. Spatial audio with dynamic head tracking also works on the Mac now, and it works the same way the feature does on the Apple TV, which is different than the iPhone or iPad because the Mac, like the Apple TV, just doesn't have the same motion sensors. So it can't always calculate the difference in position between uh, the AirPods in your ears and the device in your hand. So the system is just assuming that the direction you are looking most of the time is where your Mac screen's at. And then it bases all of the dynamics, all the calculations for the differences, the changes in movement from that. In addition to the accessibility features Apple previously announced and I previously covered, the Mac is also getting custom mouse pointers. So you can set your own outline and fill colors and just make it easier to see as it moves and changes modes. There's also better support for full keyboard access. So you can do way, way more without having to ever switch to the mouse or trackpad, ever take your hands off the keyboard. You can factory restore your Mac, blowing away all content and settings without having to reinstall Mac OS, which has always been just a huge pain. It basically just destroys the T2 or M1 hardware encryption keys. So your stuff is just goner than gone, gone. Just summary de-resolutioned in Tron parlance. And hey, here's something interesting. 
The Shortcuts app for Mac is not a Catalyst app. It's not UI kit for Mac, not at all. It's a full on Macity Mac app, an app kit under the covers app with Swift UI on the top, which just makes me go hmm for a whole number of reasons, but mostly because Swift UI seems to be staking its claim as the future of cross Apple apps, staking it right through the heart of Catalyst, maybe. Either way, anyway, you can use shortcuts on the Mac just like shortcuts on iOS to take any tasks you need to do more than two or three times a day or any tasks that require two or three more clicks than you otherwise have just any patience to give them and let shortcuts do all that heavy lifting for you. And if you're new to shortcuts, Apple has a gallery full of basics to get you started and maybe inspire you to more cunning and complex shortcuts of your own. And here's something else that's really interesting about shortcuts for Mac. It's the start of a multi-year transition from ye old automations of yore to the bold, bright future of workflows. And what that means for now is that Automator is still around on the Mac and you can import your existing automations into shortcuts to prepare them for that future. Then you can find your shortcuts with Spotlight in the Finder's context sensitive preview pane on the menu bar, even in the dock. In other words, just exactly where you'd expect to find anything on the Mac. And when shortcuts whets your appetite for higher level coding conquests, Brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie is the best place to continue. Brilliant is this awesome website and app that'll teach you the fundamentals of algorithms and neural networks, everything from character recognition like live text to search like Spotlight, but also math, science, more appropriate for this, computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, even cryptocurrency, and more. And it, because it's built on learning while doing and solving real challenges in real time with no memorizing long messy formulas or fact sheets, no tests or grades, just instant feedback that coaches you bit by bit so you can rapidly improve and learn the foundational concepts behind all the most important new careers, literally before you even realize it. So if you wanna go from just using macOS to maybe one day working on it, you can get your start today with Brilliant. Just go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie or click the link in the description. Pick a course and get started now. Brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. Hit the playlist above for videos on all the public betas, more features I didn't have room to cover here, and a bunch of deep dives to come. Just hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.